Hello everyone, myself Ms. Shudipta Roy, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmacology, Bengal School of Technology. Welcome you all to a new topic related to pharmacology, CNS Pharmacology that is Centrally Acting Skeletal Muscle Relaxants Part 1. So, let us start with what are centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxants and why this class of drugs are required. Many diseases of the brain and the spinal cord produces an increase in muscle tone which can be painful as well as disabling to the patient. Spasticity resulting from birth injury or cerebral vascular disease and the paralysis produced by spinal cord lesions are some of the examples. Local injury or inflammations such as arthritis can also have the same effect and chronic back pain is also associated with local muscle spasms. To combat these problems, this class of drug centrally acting muscle relaxants have been produced. These drugs reduces the skeletal muscle tone by selective action on the cerebrospinal axis, but they does not alter consciousness of the patient. They selectively depress the spinal and supraspinal polysynaptic reflexes which are involved in muscle tone regulation but does not affect the monosynaptically mediated stretch reflexes. The polysynaptic pathways in the ascending reticular formation are involved in the maintenance of wakefulness are also depressed. But to a lesser extent. We have already studied about this reticular formation in our previous videos of sedatives and hypnotics. For more information, please refer to, the, to that video. Now, all centrally acting muscle relaxants does not have sedative property, but some do have and this cause of drowsiness and confusion in turn are the most common side effects of the drugs that act as centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxants. Now let us come to the difference between the centrally acting and the peripherally acting muscle relaxants. The centrally acting muscle relaxants decrease the muscle tone without reducing the voluntary power whereas the peripherally acting causes muscle paralysis and thus all the voluntary movements are lost. The centrally acting inhibits the po polysynaptic reflexes of the CNS but peripherally acting blocks the neuromuscular transmissions. Centrally acting causes CNS depression whereas the peripherally acting drugs does not have any CNS effects. The centrally acting are administered through oral or parenteral route but the peripherally acting skeletal muscle relaxants are given only through intravenous administration. The centrally acting are used in cases of chronic spastic conditions which I have already told and the acute muscle spasms whereas the peripherally acting skeletal muscle relaxants are used for short terms like that of surgical operations. Now let us move on to the classification of drugs that come under centrally acting muscle relaxants. The very first one is benzodiazepines. We are very much versed with this benzodiazepines and diazepam. The second class is gabamimetics that is baclofen and thiocolchicoside. The third group is central alpha 2 agonist that is tizanidine. And the last group is mephenicin congeners. The drugs are carisoprodol and methocarbamol. With that, let us move on to the discussion related to the various classes of drugs. The very first one is benzodiazepines and the most commonly used drug of this class is diazepam. Now, 
In our previous classes, we have studied diazepam in in our previous classes, we have already studied diazepam showing sedative activity, showing muscle relaxant property, showing general anesthetic activities. In our practical class also, we have studied diazepam to be showing muscle relaxant activity with the help of rotor rod. Now, we already know benzodiazepines act by increasing the amount of chloride influx inside the cells and bind to the GABA receptors that is GABA A receptors. These GABA A receptors are ligand gated ion channels made up of pentameric subunit 2 alpha 2 beta and 1 gamma which is surrounded like a circle in the specific sequence of alpha beta alpha beta gamma around the pore when viewed from the extracellular side. Now benzodiazepines like diazepam goes and binds to the alpha gamma interface of the GABA A receptor. The membrane potential for chloride ion is negative so the membrane gets hyperpolarized when there is an increase in chloride permeability. Please refer to the mentioned link for more details about diazepam. Now let us come to the next class of drug that is GABA mimetics baclofen. Now baclofen is a chlorophenyl derivative of GABA which was prepared as a lipophilic GABA-like agent in order to assist the penetration of the blood-brain barrier which is impermeable to GABA itself. Baclofen was introduced in 1972 and it is widely used in the treatment of spasticity and related motor disorders. Baclofen acts as a selective agonist at GABA B receptors which are G protein coupled receptors. We have already studied about GABA A and GABA B receptors and we know GABA A are ion channel receptors whereas GABA B are G protein coupled receptors. Let us recall GABA B receptors once again. GABA B receptors are located presynaptically as well as uh, postsynaptically but consist of dimers having seven transmembrane subunits and the dimers are called GABA B1 and GABA B2. This GABA B1 and GABA B2 are held together by coil coil interaction in their C terminals as we know the N terminal or the amino terminal is the extracellular side of the receptor and the C terminal lies in the intracellular side of the receptor. So this coil coil interaction between the C terminals is in the intracellular side. Now activation of the dimer causes the GABA binding to the extracellular side and this trap like structure this is called the venous tra fly trap this closes after the binding agonist binding on the extracellular side after that in the intracellular side the beta 2 subunit interacts with the g protein and what does they do they inhibit adenyl cyclase they act through coupling with GI or GO subunit and inhibits voltage gated calcium channels, opens potassium channels and inhibits adenyl cyclase. Thus, they show inhibitory action on the central nervous system. Now, baclofen has antispastic action and is exerted mainly on the spinal cord where it inhibits both monosynaptic as well as polysynaptic motor neurons. It is effective if given by mouth and is used in the treatment of multiple sclerosis or spinal injury which is associated with spasticity. 
but it produces certain unwanted effects like drowsiness, motor incoordination, nausea and may also have some behavioral effects. The next drug of this class is thiocolchicoside. This is derived from colchicine and is a GABA mimetic and a glycinergic drug. Now we already know GABA mimetic and glycinergic action gives an inhibitor reaction on the CNS. When combined with NSAIDs, it is used for painful muscle spasms, sprains, back aches. Certain side effects are gastric upsets and photosensitivity reactions. We have studied about photosensitivity reactions in the adverse drug reaction chapter. Please try to correlate that. The last here in this video is centrally acting alpha 2 agonists that is tizanidine. Tizanidine is a clonidine congener but has minimum cardiovascular effects and has a central alpha 2 adrenergic agonistic effect. They release, they inhibit the release of excitatory amino acids from the spinal interneurons and may facilitate the release of inhibitory transmitter glycine. The polysynaptic reflexes are also inhibited which results in decreased muscle tone and frequency of muscle spasms. They are used in the treatment of multiple sclerosis, spinal injury spasticity which is due to neurological disorders and are also useful in painful muscle spasms of spinal origin. Their efficacy is similar to baclofen or diazepam and has been noted to be very useful in multiple sclerosis and spinal injury and stroke. They have fewer side effects like dry mouth, drowsiness, nighttime insomnia, hallucinations. They may be contraindicated in patients receiving antihypertensives, especially clonidine. They are well absorbed orally and undergoes first pass metabolism and is excreted by the kidney. So all these three classes that are benzodiazepines, GABA mimetics and centrally acting alpha 2 agonists are widely used in the treatment of acute muscle spasms, back aches, neuralgias, anxiety, tensions spastic neurological diseases and orthopedic manipulations. So, in this video we have studied the three classes of drugs used as centrally acting muscle relaxants. In our next video we will study about the final class, the fourth class of drugs, the mephenicin congeners. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for your time.